Good morning. I've decided I need to back my mic down. You hardly ever hear me say back my mic down, but I, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Never seems loud enough for me, so. But I decided that I need to be very kind to my ears because if they were to go on strike now, my mask, my glasses, and the microphone would all fall off of my face. So uh, I am grateful for my ears this morning. I'm going to share exactly, with a few additions, what I shared at the beginning of the service last week. Well, most of you were not here, and I don't know if you heard it at home, online, if you listened to the service, and uh, I just want to make sure we we get this message, so. I'm reading from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And these verses have been the guiding principle for everything we have done in planning for coming back together again. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. In humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interest but each of you to the interest of others in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus so in all of our planning and all of our meetings and all of our discussions number one priority was the interest of you to do everything we possibly could do to keep you all keep us all safe. I'm going to take this off and put a smaller one on a little while. I am hearing myself breathe and I don't like it. So we have endeavored to, to do everything for safety. We, we, some might say we did too much. We were concerned for you, for us. And so that's how we planned everything. From day one, I said that this is a moving target, and it has been. The laws have changed, things have changed, um, and we've tried to keep on top of all that. And from day one, I've said, what is true? And I still don't know. As far as COVID-19 is concerned, I still don't know. Truth seems to change day by day. But we have tried to plan to do things that would be in our all, all of our best interest don't want one person to suffer and so here we are we're back in a limited way beginning next week we'll be back to an 8 30 and an 11 o'clock service back to the old schedule so there'll be more opportunities for more more folks to attend uh, beginning next week let me give thanks let me express appreciation to our church board uh, Pamela Haglund, Don Fonner, James Gonzalez, Ken Butterworth, Kathleen Taranto, Kathy Lennon, Wayne Gray, Pastor Matt, and Debbie Radice. They have been outstanding. Um, I, I am involved in a lot of boards and a lot of discussions that involve a lot of churches. And uh, we are blessed to have a board that doesn't, even though they don't always agree on how things are perceived, they love each other and we are united. And it's, it's a joy to work with them and uh, to pray with them. You may have noticed outside as you came to the, the steps to the building that there's been some painting done, some repainting. And Ted uh, Perillo and his son Stefan have been doing most of that and making some improvements to the outside of the building. Once you stepped inside, I sure do hope you notice a difference in our foyer. Isn't it beautiful? Awesome. Oh, man, it is wonderful. Um, Sharon Butterworth's vision and Ken Butterworth's vision are behind that. Um, they, they could see what uh, many couldn't see. 
of the possibilities. And, and then the hard work of them and GAP um, has been phenomenal. They put, have put in many, many hours. And we're so, so very, very grateful. In the restrooms, um, we've installed hands-free devices for um, the faucets, for the towels, for the soap. Uh, again, trying to keep things as safe as possible. Anytime somebody goes into the restroom, um, the, the toilets are not hands-free, and of course the doors you have to touch. We have folks following after you've left to, to wipe those things down. Um, so again, we're, we're just trying to cover all the bases, and I appreciate our volunteer staff in that regards. Downstairs, there's been some repainting done in the several rooms. Jack's been hard work buffing floors. Um, uh, we're, even though we're not using the basement yet, uh, we're getting it ready. And uh, we appreciate all the work done there. Here in the sanctuary, um, so good to see Don Foner. Welcome, Don. Um, if you are not aware, he was working outside on the ladder installing the new cameras, the cables for the new cameras and fell a few weeks ago and uh, fractured his, uh, his uh, lower back, uh, compressed fracture, and also herniated disc. And uh, so it's so good to see you here. But he wor has worked hard. James has picked up um, since that for, for Don. James Gonzalez has picked up and uh, installing you. There's going to be a camera there. There's one there and there's one back there. Right now we're using the one on the post, but as soon as all the rest are hooked up, we won't, we won't have this one in the middle anymore. Um, that's for recording our services. We're go going to continue to do that and, and send out the, the good news uh, uh, via that technology in the days to come. So appreciate all the hard work done on that. Uh, appreciate Pastor Brad and all our musicians never missing a beat throughout this whole process. Our reassembly committee, Pamela Hagland, Pastor Matt, and Bill Sanchez have worked hard to put together our, our, our policy for reassembly and, uh, and all the safeguards we have in place. And, and in our Sunday morning volunteers, uh, you were met by somebody in the parking lot, um, and then you were brought to the front door and greeted and, and, and ushered in here. Um, and again, all, again all, all that is done to keep us safe in these days. And uh, you'll be ushered out, starting in the back. And um, I noticed last Sunday after the service, um, human nature, uh, there were a few folks who forgot all about social distancing, and I had to kind of walk out and say, six feet, please. Again. I, it's not about me. I, I don't like wearing these things, but I wear them whenever I'm out anywhere because I care about the other person. The scripture we just read, we're thinking about the other person. And uh, if, if we're wrong about all that, if, if, if all of this was for nothing, so I've been inconvenienced for a while. But if what we hear is right, and, and we have contributed to somebody's ill health, that's, that's, not, that's not a burden I want to carry around. So that's why we practice these things. Uh, appreciate the prayer warriors. We've needed them <laughs> during these days, and uh, appreciate all those who have been praying. Uh, folks have been praying throughout this whole time, and special prayer meetings have been called, and our church board's been praying. And boy, that, that's, that's huge. So next Sunday, we're back to two services, 8.30, 11 a.m. Still need to sign up online. It's pretty simple. If I can do it, anybody can. Um, but if you can't, if you have trouble, call Pastor Matt, and he'll do it for you. Um, he's, he's been great about that. Um, and that gives us a list so we, so we know who's coming and how to prepare, how to plan. We're limited to 50 still uh, in, the, in the sanctuary. Um, we're, we're under that today, so we're, we're in great shape today. We were right close to that last Sunday. Um, but uh, if, if as we get in the, in the flow of things with two services, if, if folks are not able to come weekly, we, we very well may add a Saturday service. Uh, we want everybody to, to be able to worship every week. So we're working on that and, and checking it very carefully. Um, the, this service is being recorded. It will be available for viewing this afternoon af anytime after 4 o'clock and thereafter on uh, our website, on YouTube, and sometimes on Facebook. Facebook's been on and off again, so I, I can't guarantee Facebook, but the other two you can find us and uh, let people know they can see us there. Um, I do a little devotional Sunday evenings called Vespers. That's on our website and on YouTube as well. And I write a little thing called Pennies. That's you can find on Facebook during the week, uh, usually Wednesday or Thursday. Um, Wednesday evening, we have a Zoom time with uh, Wayne. Wayne Gray leads uh, the sermon review via Zoom. And uh, you can, uh, uh, again, through our website, connect for that and, and be a part of that. It's Wednesday evenings at 630. And... Uh, 
Today is the last Sunday that Pastor David Hernandez is going to have the Hispanic service online because next week they'll be meeting here, Sunday afternoon, next Sunday, and we're excited about that too. We're training their staff, make sure they, they know all the precautions we take. We, we sanitize everything after you all leave, um, and so we want to make sure they know how to do all that. So that'll start next week. Uh, they'll be back in the building as well. And uh, we're, we're excited about that, too. Thanks for your patience. Uh, for the most part, you've been a patient group, and we appreciate it. Um, again, I, I don't especially like word these. I, this one was bought for me, by the way. It's got deer on it. Can you imagine that? Um, but it, I, I just have discovered it, it makes too much noise for here, so I'm, I'm going to slip out in a minute and grab one of my lighter ones. Um, that didn't give me any trouble last Sunday. But thanks for wearing them. Don't forget to keep them up over your nose or they're not really not doing any good. Um, we originally said there's not going to be any singing. Um, and I backed off of that last week because even in recording in the weeks prior, um, I, I was sitting on the front pew, I had to sing along. So, in fact, last Sunday, James, I don't know if you noticed this, I forgot to turn my mic off a couple times and I was singing. I, when I listened to the recorded service, I was like, oh, who's that awful flat voice? Yeah, yeah it would have been me. So, so I, I'm saying to us, you may sing, but don't sing out loud. Uh, we've done a lot of research in that, and that's one of the ways that, that the virus is spread when you, when you project out. So we're, we're just asking you to back down on that because we don't want that spread around. Uh, hopefully none of you have it, but just uh, as a precaution. Um, the noodles in the pew are six feet long, so they're there to keep folks. Now, if you come as a family, as a group, you all sit together, that's fine. Um, and if, it's, if you're a larger family, um, normally we, if there's three or more people, you need to slide the noodle one way or another. It, two, two or three can sit on each end and there's no problem. Leave the noodle in between and everything's good. Um, don't take the noodle and put it on the pew in front of you. Um, someone decided to do that last week. They're, they're there for a reason. Uh, slide them. Um, and if it gets to the point where there, we need every space, um, put it on the floor in front of you rather than in the pew in front of you. Okay, just set it down on the floor if, if you are a large family. If you're not, don't just leave it, just leave it be. It'll be fine. It won't bite you. It, they're, they're pretty safe. Um, so, um, again, just remember all the precautions you've been hearing about uh, and practice them here. We won't pass the offering plate. We're, again, trying to limit contact points, but there is one in the back of the sanctuary where you can place your tithe and offering, uh, either entering or exiting the sanctuary. There's also the Alabaster Church in the foyer for Alabaster giving to missions, building buildings on the mission field. That'll be up throughout the month of September. Trap doors open, just drop anything you would like to add to that in that as well. And Loaves and Fishes are starting next week again. That's our ministry to uh, homeless folks and, and folks that are really finding it difficult to find food. And we're looking for soup this month, so if you come next week, the basket's on on. You're, be on your left side entering the sanctuary, just put the cans of soup in there. Uh, again, thank you for your continued giving and for your continued uh, praying. All of that is so greatly, greatly appreciated. Heavenly Father, you are good. <laughs> it's good to be together. It's good to see folks I haven't seen in a long time. Lord, we love them so, and we, we thank you that you have kept your hand upon them. We pray during this hour that you would help us somehow to let go the cares we brought with us, or better yet, Lord, to give those cares to you right now. Here, Lord, you are awesome, holy God, you're in charge here. Help us, Lord, to worship you and praise you for who you are. Thank you for all the folks who have worked so hard to bring us to this point. We know the work is not over, and uh, and we're, we're uh, learning as we go, but uh, we're trusting you that you'll keep leading us and guiding us and directing us. In this hour, come, speak. We're here to hear. In Jesus' name, amen.
majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end. God, we come into your presence this morning. We lift our eyes to heaven and we proclaim together that you are great and you are awesome. You are holy. You are pure. You are true. You are high and majestic. You are sovereign, you are mighty, and you are powerful. We come into your presence and we bow before your throne. We humble ourselves before you. And we worship you. And we praise you today. I thank you for these people, Lord God, and I thank you for this opportunity to gather. I thank you for the dynamic that happens, Lord God, when your people come together in your sanctuary and when we worship you and we praise you. For the dynamic that happens when your word is proclaimed. I thank you for this day and for this time. I pray your blessing on it. That each one here would sense your presence and your nearness. That we would be quiet and still in these moments that we would hear your voice today. We praise you. And we worship you and we thank you. Have your way in your church, in our hearts, in our lives today. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
believe in God the Father, God Almighty by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to be, all created things began. We believe in Christ the Savior, Son of God in human frame, virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. Christ who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he descended to the dead. And we believe in Jesus risen, heaven's king to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit, in one church below above. Saints of God in one communion, in, in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Savior, Lord and friend, we shall rise with children here with us again and uh, not going to have you come up but uh, you can see what I'm doing from there anyway so it's good to see you man missed you and uh, the text for the treasure box this morning is uh, Psalm chapter 93 verse 1 it says the Lord reigns he is robed in majesty the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Majesty. I was, uh, I was about probably eight, maybe nine years old. The first time I saw a wapiti. That's the Native American word for an elk. And uh, it means the light deer, because they have a real light tan color to them, except for their neck, which is dark brown. And the, the elk, um, th there's uh, pictures. Uh, James, did, do you get the pictures for here, or just going to be online? Just online. So check it out later on, kids. There are pictures of elk that are just phenomenal. They're huge. There's something about an elk that's majestic. Now, this is just one antler. The other one's over at my house still. This one that was shed, one that they dropped off. And this is, this is from an elk that was pretty young. He was probably maybe two and a half years old is all. So if you can imagine this antler being three times this size, that's, that's the size of a fully mature elk. And there's something about that. When you see them, it's majestic. It's, it's, like, it's like they are a king and they know it. In fact, um, Depending on how many points, this one has one, two, three, four, five. So it's only a five-pointer. Most of them are six or seven-pointers, the big ones, sometimes eight. Um, and uh, if, if they have six of these tines on their antlers, they're called royal elks because people just have always recognized how majestic they are. If they have seven tines, they're called imperial elk. And if they have eight, they're called monarchs. All those have to do with kings. And so... Um, well, look at that. You're looking online now to see the pictures. Isn't that cool? I keep forgetting how technology works. So they are a majestic beast. They're just, there's just something about them. And every time, the first time I saw them when I was a little kid, my dad took us to a, uh, a game preserve near Allentown, Pennsylvania called Trexler Town Game Preserve. Um, and uh, that's the first time I ever saw an elk. And I just, I just stood there with my eyes wide open, my mouth dropped open. And I said, wow, what, a, what an animal. Um, and that's nothing. As majestic and as awesome as an, as an elk is, that is nothing compared to the majesty of God. We're going to preach about that this morning. We're going to talk about that in the sermon this morning. But, uh, I hope you never forget how awesome God is, how majestic. And whatever it is in your life that you come into, children, that, 
that you see that uh, is majestic to you. Think about the fact that <laughs> that's nothing when you compare it to how majestic God is. Heavenly Father, help us to do what your servant just sang. Not easy for us, Lord. Especially not easy in these days. Help us to hear you. Help us to listen. Help us to hush. Heavenly Father, as Pastor Brad sang, I 
revisited in my mind the event that happened with me this week. You were there, Lord. You remember. For you don't forget anything. A young man let loose all of his anger. All of his frustration, all of his fears, all of his anxieties. And shouted at me for half an hour. Didn't take it personal, Lord didn't need to. It wasn't really addressed at me, he was just venting. But if there was some way I could have communicated to him better during that time, I certainly would have. And my simple message would have been, shh, be still now. I think it helped him that I listened. I think it helped him, Lord, that I didn't argue with him. Sometimes I agreed with what he had to say. But I would, I would just usher him right now, Lord, again, to your throne. I would bring him right to your throne right now, Lord. What an honor to do that. And just ask that you would help him to be still. He says he knows you and he loves you. Help him, help him, Lord, to know your majesty. Help him to know that everything he is experiencing, everything he sees, everything he hears, everything about life right now is in your hands. And he is in your hands, and his wife is in your hands, and his children are in your hands. In fact, help us all to know that, Lord. Oh, I'm not asking, Lord, that, that you help us to intellectualize it, but, Lord, that we would know it in our hearts. you're God and you love us and our times are in your hands last Sunday Lord I shared that list and I'm just going to share the first names Lord with you this morning and ask for your help not just for those on this list because oh my goodness throughout the week I, I in my own prayer time Lord with you I probably quadrupled this list but these are folks that we know here that are really dealing with some difficult things in their health mostly. You know, especially, Lord, again, it's so good to see Don, but heal that back, Lord. Heal it, we pray. Edie finally got to go home, and now she was put back in the hospital again, and from there she'll be going to another nursing home. Lord, she needs your touch. Kristen and Jackie, Lord. This is a huge week. Lord, help the medical profession to get moving on this and to do what needs to be done and not a bit more. And so, Lord, we ask that you would be with Barbara and Arnie and Arlene and Karen's mom and Steve and Judy and Fred and Chaplain Patty and Joyce Funk and Debbie Denazi, Pastor David's son, and Barbara and Bernie, and Travis and Colin, and Lynn and Catherine Smith, and Fred Singer, and Alan Walton. And for all those lords who are right now under the dark cloud of depression, help them to see the rays of your light breaking through. 
and anoint the word of the Lord. Lord, we are grateful for you leading us to the minor prophets. And what, a, what a joy it has been for me to discover what treasures are there in these 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. And as we look at Habakkuk again today, Lord, we just pray that you would anoint the word. Anoint the word, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It thunders, the oaks start twisting, the forest sounds, the cedars breaking, the waters see you and start their writhing, from the depths the song is rising. in it. The earth is his. Well, last week we started the book of Habakkuk. We found that uh, Habakkuk had a complaint. He wanted to know why evil people were having the advantage over the righteous. It's an old question. And uh, the Lord began to answer him. He didn't like the Lord's answer. The Lord's immediate answer was going to get worse, Habakkuk. You think it's bad? The Babylonians are coming. You thought the Assyrians were bad? Look out. It's not what Habakkuk wanted to hear. And so Habakkuk made another complaint about all that. And then he decided he was going to build himself a tower. Maybe if he got up on that tower and had a bird's eye view of what God sees, maybe that would help him have understanding. So he's in the tower still as we look at the text for today. We began to look at the Lord's answer 
second answer to Habakkuk and uh, found that in the, in the midst of describing the evil, the Lord also pointed out the call for the righteous to be faithful. We are called to be faithful no matter what. And so we're going to look at what the Lord had to say to Habakkuk after that. So we're be beginning with verse 6 of chapter 2 and finishing chapter 2. Would you stand with me in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord? And this is the Lord speaking. Though not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods, makes himself wealthy by extortion. How long must this go on? Will not your creditors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their prey. Because you plundered many nations, the people who are left will plunder you. For you shed human blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain, setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of many people, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin till they're drunk so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now it is your turn. Drink. Let your nakedness be exposed. The cup from the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you, for you have shed human blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Of what value is an idol carved by a craftsman or an image that teaches lies? For the one who makes it trusts in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says, would come to life. Or to a lifeless stone, wake up! Can it give guidance? It's covered with gold and silver. There's no breath in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. May God add his blessing to his word. You may be seated. The prophet Habakkuk climbed into his tower and waited. The Lord told him that the righteous live by faithfulness. The righteous are steadfast. They're steady. They're accountable. They're faithful. And then he began to tell Habakkuk what he was really <laughs> yearning for from the beginning. He finally told the prophet what he wanted to hear. He told the prophet Habakkuk that sinners would be punished. That's what Habakkuk wanted to hear from the beginning. And so the Lord spoke five woes against sinners. We just read them. He began, woe to him who piles up stolen goods. The first woe was against those who plunder. Plunder abounds in our world. Rioters plunder. Woe to those who plunder. Evil armies plunder. They always have, they always will. Woe to those who plunder. Internet scammers, plunder. Woe to those who plunder. Oh, Habakkuk liked the sound of that. The second woe was against those who prosper by unjust gain, plotting the ruin of poor people. Well, we've had our decades of Ponzi scheme villains in our culture, haven't we? Gaining unjustly. That's just naming one group that's done that. Woe to them. The third woe was against those who shed innocent blood. Oh my, how violence abounds across our globe, and it's growing with, with the anger and the hatred that's growing like a cancer. Woe to the violent. Woe to those who shed innocent blood. Woe to the drug lords of our cities. Woe to the nations of our world. 
fourth woe was against those who promote drunkenness. Oh my, there are a lot of folk who will need to answer for the reckless destruction of lives with this one. Look out, Hollywood. Fifth woe was against idolatry. Idolatry is as rampant today as ever. Woe to those who worship humanity and the manufactured things of humanity. We sure do have our idols, don't we? We even named it American Idol, didn't we? Woe to those who worship idols of any kind. And then finally Habakkuk heard what he'd been waiting for. God has the last word. And judgment of holy justice was on its way in God's time. And yet once again, mixed into the warnings for sinners, there are some verses that we just read that almost do not fit. Verse 14 and verse 20 seems somewhat out of place. Habakkuk 2.14, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And 2.20, But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Wow, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, it will fill the earth. It will saturate the planet. Bible scholar J.I. Packer, in his book, Knowing God, wrote this back in 1973. The knowledge of the glory of God, which today Christians largely lack, is one reason why our faith is so feeble and worship is so flabby. He said, we are modern humanity, and modern humanity, though they cherish their own great thoughts, have, as a rule, small thoughts about God. He was right. In that same time frame, that same decade, a pastor by the name of Jack Hayford wrote this, quote, On one hand, there is a contemporary tendency toward the inappropriately casual, which may claim to be simple, but actually becomes trite, glib, and occasionally cutesy in American Christian worship experiences. Oh my, I wonder what those anointed servants would say about the contemporary tendencies today. The Bible tells us that someday the Lord will make his glory known throughout the earth and humanity will be silent. Hold that thought. We'll come back to it. Humanity will be silent. Right now we have glimpses. We have reflections. We have glances at the glory of God. But in that day he will make it known in all of its majesty. The knowledge of his glory will saturate the planet like the waters cover the sea. Not even flex seal will be able to keep the glory out. I'm glad you laughed because I thought that was funny. Habakkuk wrote, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Do, did you see the majesty of the glory of God in those two verses? A little bit longer quote from, from J.I. Packer. Again, he wrote this in 1973. He said, Today, vast stress is laid on the thought that God is personal. We've been taught that most of our life, and he is. God's personal. But this truth is so stated as to leave the impression, he said, that God is a person of the same sort as we are, weak, inadequate, ineffective, yeah, a little pathetic. This is not the God of the Bible, he writes. Our personal life is a finite thing. It's limited in every direction, in space, in time, in knowledge, in power. But God is not so limited. He's eternal. He's infinite. He's almighty. He has us in his hands. We never have him in ours. Though sometimes we act like we do. Oh, I used, to, I used to quake back in the 80s when the health, wealth, and happiness preachers would say, you can demand it of God. Who do you think you are? Packer goes on to say, like us, God is personal. But unlike us, he's great. In all his constant stress on the reality of God's personal concern for his people, and on the gentleness, tenderness, sympathy, 
patience and yearning compassion that he shows towards them, the Bible never lets us lose sight of his majesty and his unlimited dominion over all his creatures. The book of the Psalms points us toward the majesty and glory of God repeatedly. From, from beginning to end, the Psalms points us in that direction. Here's just one, one of the, the examples of that from what King David wrote. Psalm 145, verse 3. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. I will meditate on your wonderful works. When we meditate on the, on the wonders of God, we, we're silent. We're not talking. We're listening. We're letting God speak to us. I got this card just two days ago from somebody I've never met, somebody who bought my book, and uh, I just thought I'd share a part of what they wrote here. They said, thank you so much for sharing your, your stories and observations with me. It's odd, they said. I'm a naturalist and teach environmental education. I'm sure there's a whole lot this person could teach me. She said, I'm a naturalist and teach environmental education, yet I have not spent enough time in creation just listening and being. Your stories make me strive to do better. She teaches that, but she hasn't spent time silent, listening, being, and letting God speak to her. Oh, the glorious splendor of his majesty. We have reflections of it in what he has made, but someday he will saturate the world with his glory. There's something to meditate upon. Instead of us fixating on a broken world, and it's broken, instead of us fixating on a broken world, how about we meditate upon the majestic glory of God? Oh, I want to say that one again. Instead of fixating on a broken world, how about we meditate upon the majestic glory of God? Why, that might even change our attitudes and transform our hearts. Yes, I believe it would help us. So many folks are so negative in these days. You almost hate to begin a conversation with people. And I do not believe that the Lord is pleased with our negativity. I do not believe that he's in heaven saying, oh, look how negative they are. Isn't it wonderful? Habakkuk, like Job, had some questions for the Lord. And the Lord directed both men to his glorious majesty, to his majestic glory. That's where he pointed them, both of them. Indeed, the Lord's response to Job filled the pages of biblical script with 128 verses. 128 verses, the Lord tells Job to look at his majesty. He started out by saying, brace yourself, Job. I have some questions for you. See, Job was asking questions of the Lord prior to that. I've got some for you. His first question was, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Job, where were you? And then the Lord went on to chronicle the consequences of his creative power and his majestic glory. So sometime this week, church, I really want to encourage you to get out your Bible and meditate upon the book of Job, chapters 38, 39, 40, and 41. That's the book of Job. Chapters 38, 39, 40, and 41. Just read it, meditate on it, let it speak to you. And while you're doing it, be silent before the Lord. And then on another day, I would encourage you to turn to the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. 
The prophet Isaiah was dealing with a people in Israel whose mood was dark. You know, kind of like, well, the United States of America now. Their mood was dark. They were a despondent people, a despairing people, a people against whom the tide of events had turned sour. Life was just rolling along for them for a long time, and all of a sudden, it just turned so sour. They began to question whether the cause of the Lord was waning, whether God had left them, whether he was shrinking and falling away. And so let's look at what the prophet Isaiah, anointed by the Lord, had to say to those folks. And he directed them in Psalm 40, the latter half of that chapter, to look at five things. Number one, he told them to look at what God has already done. He said, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or was it the breath of his hand marked off the heavens? Who's held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains and the scales and, and the hills in a balance? Who has understood the spirit of the Lord and instructed him as a counselor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him and, and whom taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? And of course, the answer to all those questions is no one. Because God is God. Look at what God has already done. Behold his majestic glory. Number two, the Lord is greater than the mightiest nations. Isaiah wrote this, surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were just fine dust. Before him, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Oh, and I find folk today, both in and outside of the church of Jesus Christ, who are trembling when they consider the might and the power of the world's nations. What's going to happen next? Church, the nations are like a drop in the bucket compared to the glory of God. Number three, the Lord is greater than the whole world. Isaiah wrote, verse 22, he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Why, just, just consider the size of our planet alone. It's huge. It really is. I'm in awe when I have a window seat in an airplane, and I almost always try to get a window seat when I'm in an airplane. I haven't flown in a few years, but... When I have, I've always tried to get it, because I just like looking down going, wow, this place is big. Look at that mountain. It looks, it looks, it looks tiny, but it's huge. Look at, the, look at the land spread out. Look at the farmland of America. I love window seats. I mean, I'm in awe of how big even the country is, much less the world. I'm in awe from the summit of Sandia Peak overlooking the New Mexico desert as the sun sets out to the west and you just, as far as you can see, is this vast expanse. I'm in awe from the top of Lolo Pass between Montana and Idaho over the Clearwater River. You look down from the Rocky Mountains and follow the, your eyes follow the Clearwater River down into the plains of Idaho. I'm in awe of it. It's huge. I'm in all the mountain ranges of central Wyoming, back there in the backcountry, where as far as you can see, all you see are mountains, just mountain after mountain after mountain. And you can see you're on the top, and you can just see it all spread out. A couple of years ago, my son Mark said while we rode through those mountains, Dad, I feel insignificant. Indeed. Yet the Lord is greater than all of it. He's greater than our planet. He is awesome. Number four, he's greater than kings and dictators. Isaiah wrote, he brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither and the whirlwind sweeps them away like the chaff. Wow. Oh, the rulers of this world think they're such big stuff. 
They've got a day with God coming. Wait. The prophet says, wait, I'm not finished. Number five. The Lord is greater than the stars. Verse 26. Isaiah said, look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them all by name because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. King David sang, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Years ago, on a teen camp out in the mountains of central Pennsylvania when Pastor Matt was still a teenager. He and I took a walk together in the darkness one evening to the top of a hill. Pastor Matt had some huge burdens on his soul in those days. Huge. And so we slipped away from the group so he could speak with me about them. And so that I could be steadfast and faithful so I could help hold up his hands. I remember it was a warm summer night. The sky was particularly clear. We, we, we cannot appreciate the sky here in New Jersey. We have too much artificial light. But you get up there in those mountains, away from all of the artificial light, and the, the darkness of the night is darker, so which makes the stars brighter. It looks like you can almost touch them. The sky was clear. And the fireflies were out. We get to see a few fireflies around in our backyard from time to time in the summer. But you get up there in the meadows of the mountains of Pennsylvania, and, and there's just, they're everywhere. There were millions of stars above us and, and hundreds of thousands of lightning bugs below us as we stood in the darkness in awe of God's creation. And we talked, and we laughed. We cried. And then we prayed to the Lord who had everything we could see and the things we could not see. Sometimes they're the scariest, aren't they? The things we cannot see. Under his control. And after the prayer was over, well, anyway, after the verbal part of our prayer was over, we just stood there in the silence and allowed our Creator to heal our souls. And as you can tell by my emotions right now, I will never forget that awesome moment. When I got back to my tent, I pulled out my flashlight and a pad and a pen, and I jotted down these words. Somewhere between the heavens and earth, we watched the nightlight show. Standing on a grassy slope, we stared in wide-eyed awe. Finding the big and little dippers, a diamond-studded belt in the Milky Way, we could not help but breathe deeply from the glory of midnight skies. Somewhere between the poles of north and south, where east passes west and exchanges places, we gazed delightfully at a firefly show. Blinking and flickering and shining and flashing and glowing and gleaming, the friendly little tuxedo-clad creatures flew about playfully. It was a creation play, lightning bug style admission was free. And somewhere between the mad rush of now and the serenity of eternity, we stood in a breezed, bathed meadow and sighed a holy sigh of silence. A holy sigh of silence. The Lord said to Habakkuk, The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth Him. 
We could use a holy hush in these days, could we not? It would be good for us to just stop talking sometimes, would it not? Just stop texting. Just stop replying. Just stop posting on social media. Just stop reposting what some other angry individual said. Cut, copy, paste, send. Just stop it. Not bad enough we're sharing our own anger, which now we're sharing other people's anger. How about, church, how about we just stop talking and hush in the presence of the glory of God? Just stop talking and be silent in the presence of his majesty. Just be silent and wait. Be silent and breathe. I thought it might be good if we practiced that a little this morning. Let's practice silence at the Lord's table this morning. Shh. Don't say anything. Just listen. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. Let him speak for a change. As you came in, you picked up the elements to the Lord's table. If you peel the top layer, you'll get to the wafer. If you peel the next one, you'll get to the juice. When you're ready, take it and eat it. Take it and drink it. Shh, hush. I'm going to ask God to bless it, and then we're going to be silent for a while. In our silence, receive the elements. Heavenly Father, bless the bread. Bless the cup. Bless the silence. Help us just to listen to the majestic voice. Help us to see at least a glimpse of the glory of God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus of eternal promise, stirring in your sons and daughters, earth revealing heaven's wonders, spirit come, spirit come, what you spoke is now your children shall behold it. Dreams awaken in this moment. Spirit come, Spirit come. Pour it out. Let your love run over. Here and now, let your glory your love run over here and now let your glory fill this house now the world awaits your presence and this power is within to be your witness. Spirit come, Spirit come, pour it out, let your love run over, here and now, let your glory fill this house, pour it out, let your love run Heavenly Father, you know how much I love these folk. And 
last two weeks, Lord. You got to see my soul being a little giddy as I saw people I hadn't seen in months. Felt like a little kid. And so I'm asking, Heavenly Father, that you would bless your people. Would you help us to keep our eyes focused and fixed on your glorious majesty, the majestic glory of God? And that we would draw from that a quiet confidence, knowing that our times are in your hands, and you can't do any better than that. Go with us and make us a blessing. All of God's people said,